California and the modern world still has buildings that will most likely collapse during a big earthquake. The three deadly building types that we'll be discussing are actually so dangerous in earthquakes that California and other earthquake prone states even have legal mandates in place that require building owners to strengthen and retrofit them. I'll go over how these buildings behave in an earthquake to show you why they're so dangerous and how structural engineers can retrofit and fix these buildings. I'm Matt Picardle and I'm a licensed structural engineer in California. Structural engineers, by the way, design the skeletal systems of buildings and bridges so they stand up and don't fall down during heavy winds or earthquakes. Let's jump into the first dangerous building type. And if you remember the Turkey earthquake last year, you've probably seen these types of buildings and the horrific way that they collapse, notoriously known as the pancake collapse. These are so deadly because their collapse is so sudden and widespread. The entire building is lost. These buildings are called soft story structures, meaning the first story is soft and weak and not rigid enough against earthquakes. So how did we even get to having these soft story buildings? Often buildings are made up of weak joints. They typically have enough strength to stand up, but if you push it horizontally or sideways, such as with wind or earthquakes, it'll fall over. How most buildings overcome this is by putting walls or diagonal braces on each side of the structure to stiffen it up against wind and earthquakes. But if you have tuck under parking under an apartment, for example, you can't have braces or walls on the first floor front side of the building because that's where you park your car. This is how we get what structural engineers call a soft story building. By removing the wall, the first story of the building becomes softer or weaker against earthquakes, resulting in the infamous pancake collapse. So how do structural engineers strengthen these buildings without taking away the parking? The most common concept is to strengthen the joints themselves. For proof of concept, let's add some joint stiffeners around the first floor opening so it doesn't interfere with the parking space. Now let's put it through an earthquake. Success. The way engineers typically do this in real buildings is by adding a special steel frame that's strong enough to resist these earthquake loads. Now for the second type of building that's deadly in an earthquake. And what makes this building type very dangerous is when it fails, it's instantaneous. There's no warning, no time to escape the building, and it just doesn't break. It sometimes explodes and there goes the building. This building type is called a non-ductile concrete structure. Non-ductile essentially means brittle. It's not flexible and concrete by itself is a brittle material and you don't want brittle construction materials during an earthquake because when these structures become damaged during an earthquake, they can suddenly collapse without warning, leaving no time for the building occupants to evacuate the building. Here's an example with a brittle material, styrofoam. If you load it to failure, the way it fails is sudden because it's brittle. It's not ductile, hence the name non-ductile concrete. So you want concrete to have some flexibility, but how do you make a brittle material not brittle? Well, structural engineers found out that you can put some flexible ductile material in the concrete. Let's do this for the styrofoam example. Let's put a flexible, strong material such as duct tape on the concrete. Load it to failure and see that the styrofoam has failed, but it hasn't collapsed because of the duct tape. If you were in the building and you see the beam or the floor sagging this much, you know it's damaged and now you have enough time to get the heck out of that building. In practice, structural engineers don't use duct tape, of course. Instead, they put steel bar reinforcing and concrete in order to make it less brittle and more ductile. In short, non-ductile concrete structures are concrete structures that don't have enough steel reinforcing in them. Older concrete buildings in California, usually built before 1977, are most likely to have non-ductile concrete construction. These can be tough to spot, so it's best to consult a structural engineer for inspection. Retrofits for these buildings vary, but usually adding more concrete walls or steel brace frames can help, or in some cases, even wrapping the concrete elements with special structural fiber that reinforces the concrete, similar to the duct tape example. Now for the final deadly building type. What makes this one so dangerous is that it's even worse than the non-ductile concrete. Not only is it brittle with sudden failures, but it's even weaker than concrete because it contains no steel reinforcing bars. The walls also tend to separate from the roof during earthquakes, so the risk of collapse is also high. These buildings are called 
unreinforced masonry buildings. These buildings are made up of masonry bricks held together with mortar, but with no steel bar reinforcing. And as we talked about with non-ductile concrete, this means it's very brittle, which means it cracks and falls apart easily during an earthquake as shown in this clip of an unreinforced masonry building on an earthquake simulator at UC San Diego. You can think of it as making a house out of Legos brick by brick. It stands up fine, sure, but if you apply any horizontal or, or sideways loads, such as window earthquakes, you'll see that the bricks pull apart easily. These buildings typically have the red brick exterior, wood floors and roofs, and they are older buildings in California typically built before the 1940s. Structural engineers can usually fix these by adding in more concrete walls reinforced with steel bars, or they can even look into gluing on special fiber to the masonry face, just like our duct tape example before, to reinforce the masonry. But past earthquakes have also shown that these masonry walls tend to separate from its wooden floor and roofs due to weak connections, causing the building to collapse. These buildings often need beefier wall to floor connections in the form of wall to roof anchors, and you can often see these anchor bolts on the face of retrofitted buildings. Now, where can you find out if your building is in need of a retrofit? If you're in the United States and in an earthquake prone state, such as California or Seattle, you can just usually Google, does my building need a seismic retrofit in your city? And it will usually lead you to a government website that tells you the mandatory retrofit programs in place, and you can find out if your building is one of them. If you you'd like to see structural engineers use the world's largest outdoor earthquake simulator to test a wooden skyscraper against a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake, or if you'd like to know how engineers actually design buildings so they don't fall down during earthquakes, check out these two videos here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.